Please come on. On April 8th, 2000, on the campus of Fresno State, was the grand opening of the Downing Planetarium adjacent to the Science 2 building. It took two years prior to plan and finally open the planetarium. It features a 30-foot dome with 74 show seats. Yet many people in the Central Valley are not aware about there being a planetarium at all in Fresno. Whenever we get new customers here or um, new attendees to our public shows, they're always like, I didn't even know it was here and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's been here for almost 19 years now. Kids are always asking questions and sometimes we don't know how to answer them. So there's still a lot out there to learn, not only on our planet, but on others as well. Haley Bishop, who is currently an art student at Fresno State, shares with us the joys of working at the planetarium. I've always loved space, like it's been constant passion of mine. And I'm not a, an astronomy student or anything. I just happened to uh, stumble across the planetarium. I used to come here when I was little, and I really wanted to help out with it. Dr. Steve White is the host at the Downing Planetarium shows and also teaches astronomy courses at Fresno State in the physics department. He talks about his start at Fresno State. I came to Fresno State in 1994 as an assistant professor, and my background is in experimental physics at low temperatures. I studied magnets at almost absolute zero. Dr. White teaches Physical Science 21, which is elementary astronomy at Fresno State University. He describes what he teaches in his course. And so what we do is we start out trying to learn some of the constellations and the stars' names and things like that. And then I go back all the way to the beginning to where people didn't actually even know that the Earth moves. And so I go through how they finally discovered that. And then we do a bit on space program history, going back to the beginning of the space age with Sputnik when the Russians launched that, tell the story of how humans made it to the moon for the very first time on July 20th, 1969. I remember that. It's fantastic to be able to share that with my students. Dr. White fills us in with the idea of how the planetarium got started. And during my very first semester, I got several calls from teachers asking me, could I come out to their school, maybe bring a telescope, bring a slide projector, talk about astronomy, and so I did. And before long, actually, we had the idea that maybe we would build a planetarium on campus. The original idea was that it would be very small, Maybe we would open one weekend a month or Dr. something. Dr. White explains the process of getting the equipment and the building set up for creating the Downing Planetarium, in addition to how the Downing family contributed to the planetarium. Uh, well, we found some equipment, and we made arrangements to buy it, and Roger Key and I went out to Kansas and took all this equipment apart. We got a 20-foot dome and a very old spit star projector. It was more than two years old. And uh, we brought it all back here because we were worried about it. And then we were very, very fortunate to get a large donation that allowed us to build a planetarium building, a standalone planetarium from the Downing family, uh, from Dr. Harold Downing, Tom, his son, and Cynthia. And since that time, well, we've been open for 18 years now. We've had thousands and thousands of shows. Besides the public or private shows at the Downing Planetarium, it also features before and during their Friday night shows a 13-inch Newtonian telescope for anyone to look through for free. The first type of this telescope was first invented by Sir Isaac Newton around 1668. I saw how they rolled this heavy, enormous red telescope carefully outside. There is a parabolic reflector at the bottom of this telescope, which helps either gather or reflect light, so that way one can see the planets or stars that they want to look up into in the sky. Without that mirror, the light would come through the lens, and everything would be fuzzy, so it helps focus in certain target subjects. Dr. White elaborates on this more. We have a 13-inch uh, Newtonian reflecting telescope, so that's based on a 13-inch mirror which gathers the light and then focuses it into an image and then we use an eyepiece so that we can uh, magnify the image. And so these kinds of telescopes are good for looking at faint things. When you're in town though, there's so much uh, you know, scattered light in the sky, it's hard to see things that are very, very faint. So mostly what we do is concentrate on looking at things like the moon and the planets. Haley elaborates on some of the telescope's features. 
and it is a hundred times magnification so it's not the strongest um, magnification out there but it certainly is better than something you can get at like Target or something like that. It's big, it's cumbersome, it's <laughs> a pain in the butt sometimes because the weight is finicky and if you touch it even slightly it moves but in ultimately it gives the best view that we can get here in Fresno. Haley talks about her favorite planet that she likes to look at through the telescope. I adore Saturn. Like we get to see her almost every um, public show that we have, that we have the telescopes out. So far away, but we can still see the details of her rings and stuff. And just to see something that's so beautiful in Hubble photographs with your own eyes through a telescope is really, really cool. To watch during the year would be the Season of Light show that's in December, and Phantom of the Universe, which is narrated by actress Tilda Swinton. The Downing Planetarium is filled with laid-back, friendly, and welcoming staff. It is another alternative destination to go and check out instead of always going to the movie theaters or for bowling on campus, and it's a fun experience to go and enjoy, and you learn something at the same time, since a lot of people might not know that much about it astronomy and it's cool that we have a planetarium here in Fresno. Sabrina Kumar with Fresno State Focus Radio Edition.